guys and welcome to the channel. Today we are at um, Forget-Me-Not Pond in Kananaskis country. Uh, it's about uh, 45 minutes uh, west of Calgary. It's uh, in Provincial Park, uh, close to Elbow, Elbow Falls, like another maybe 15 minutes uh, west from there. And today um, I want to talk about side mount diving and it's mostly recreational side mount uh, that we, I will talk about. Um, the benefits of side mount diving versus back mount. I, I will bring up some uh, points, uh, what's good about side mount, what's, uh, why I chose it over uh, back mount. So I have been diving for about uh, nine years now and uh, I started doing side mount about five years ago. Um, at first it's a little bit uh, challenging to choose your gear and uh, the proper harness to adjust all the harness uh, bungee cords and uh, tweak it up to where you want it. Uh, it becomes uh, pretty much a second nature. There's a lot of benefits for side mount diving. First uh, major benefit for side mount is redundancy. Uh, diving with uh, two totally separate systems uh, makes the world of a difference and um, safety is uh, huge uh, benefit uh, having two separate uh, systems. Of course, you have uh, way more air than uh, on a back mount dive. It's uh, two tanks versus single tank. And you can still do your nitrox and everything else. I do once in a while technical diving as well, but uh, mostly I'm staying within uh, recreational uh, dive limits. Uh, here in Forget Me Not Pond in Kananaskis, uh, this is a pretty shallow location uh, that's probably between 14 and 17 feet of depth. Uh, the water is crystal clear and this, uh, it's, this man -made, uh, it's a man-made lake and um, there, on the bottom uh, there's a spring, uh, so there's a spring water fed. As you see there's a little r elbow river c coming through. Um, it got pretty destroyed after the flood where there was a big flood, uh, flood here in Calgary. Uh, that was before I relocated from Winnipeg to Calgary. A harness is number one, uh, which is uh, something that you have to make it fit for yourself. Benefits uh, of side mount, uh, as you know, more air. Uh, more air makes it uh, safer diving for everyone. Uh, if you are air hog, that makes a uh, gives you more air so you have enough time to do your safety stops and even if somebody else is in need you can supply the extra air. Uh, the only downside of side mount is when you're diving from the boat. You don't have to uh, dive with uh, two tanks uh, when you're doing side mount. You, you can also do with one tank. The only thing uh, different is you have to configure your weight uh, slightly differently than uh, the, for a single tank, of course, to, to keep yourself buoyant. It, uh, I think it makes you a way better diver also. It uh, improves your diving skills uh, when you're doing side mount. Uh, keeps you buoyancy intact and uh, you always practice your buoyancy to stay level uh, in the water. Uh, which is a huge advantage, uh, especially when you're doing uh, ocean photography or video. You are nice and horizontal versus most of the recreational diving are, divers are swimming sort of like that, which doesn't look good. And I think it looks cooler at the same time. Um, the only, like I said, the only problem with the side mount is when you're diving from the boat. It's a little bit more cha challenging for the uh, boat entry and exit, but on the other hand here uh, when you're diving offshore it's a huge benefit because uh, what makes it good you carry one tank at a time you can uh, set up your system pretty much uh, right on the shore and you'll be good for a dive without carrying your heavy back mount uh, tanks or even a two back mount twin that makes it even worse I guess. A couple different harnesses uh, you can choose for your side mount uh, my choice was uh, the X-Deep harness. Uh, it's probably one of the most uh, streamlined, uh, streamlined uh, harness. And uh, another benefit of it, when you're traveling, it takes way less room than your uh, ordinary buoyancy compensator. Um, what's beautiful also about this harness here, um, you have your weights, uh, weight pockets on your back, and uh, 
since I'm diving here in a cold water dry suit, I also have additional weight uh, on my belt and on my shoulder straps. So like I said, like, there's quite a bit of adjustment uh, to be made uh, on the harness uh, for a side mount. Uh, but once you have it tweaked, uh, it, uh, it fits nice and perfect. Your, sang your tanks will be staying close to you and um, it's easy to, to move around uh, in the water. So the side mount was uh, probably first uh, des designed for the cave divers and technical divers. Uh, I did some cave diving in Mexico, uh, you can check the videos on my channel and uh, it's quite uh, spectacular uh, scenery down there. So the other equipment that I'm using, um, I'm using uh, here for my regulators, um, Apex XTX50, that's a side mount regs. Uh, why I chose those regs? Because probably they are the most reliable regulators on the market. Uh, even though some, some people will tell you there's better regulators, but those ones are just top notch. What's good about it, they're very easy to service. So I can service the whole system by myself as long as I can get the parts online. With the side mount, uh, normal setup uh, on your tanks. So one of the tanks, uh, you have the long hose, uh, so that's just for, uh, for emergency. Uh, if uh, somebody runs out of air or you have to do the air share sharing, so it's easy to pass it over to a diver that, that is in need. One of the tanks has two rubber uh, retainers for hose, so this way it stays nice and clean underwater. And the second tank, it uses a short, shorter hose which just has a bungee cord that goes around your neck. So like I said, uh, with the side mount uh, there is uh, a lot of benefits, but since I do technical diving once in a while, um, I have redundancy and there's more to it than just air. So basically anything with the side mount diving, uh, we are using double. So you have two separate systems, as I mentioned before, two dive computers. Just in case one fails, you have the other one uh, in emergency. So th that makes it so much safer. So going back uh, to the harness, um, I didn't cover that. So I showed you before, I showed you before the actual harness, but uh, with the side mount harness, you have a separate bladder. There's uh, different, uh, different manufacturers that they make it all in one. So the, the one negative side uh, when you have to wear your equipment uh, on a dive site and you have to, you cannot pretty much walk with everything on you. Uh, normally how we do it, we get the tanks uh, by the water and then we dress up and we gear up uh, right on the shore or underwater. No, it depends uh, on the situation. There's some lakes here like Waterton Lake in Alberta it has a pretty big wave sometimes as the winds get pretty strong out there. It's a good idea in that uh, scenario to take your tanks underwater, put your regulator in your mouth and gear up underwater. I don't see a problem with that, very easy, grab your two tanks, plunge down to about 10, uh, 9, 10 feet of water and you can clip everything underwater not too hard to do. So side mount makes you a better diver in the long run. Uh, you, you, because you practice your buoyancy as I mentioned before and uh, you get your skill to the level where they should be and you always develop. It's not something what you see on a recreational diving. Sometimes the divers are very messy, stuff is hanging all over the place with side mount you're trying to stay as clean as possible your hoses have to be organized if you have a camera and everything nicely clipped your um, your second regulator is uh, also should be clipped on your shoulder and uh, so normally how you dive side mount you just don't use up all air from one tank uh, you breathe for about 10 15 minutes out of one tank then you switch the regulator and you breathe from the other tank uh, this way you have an equal amount of air on both sides uh, for most of the dive. Also, once um, the air gets lower on your tanks, the tanks will start floating on you and they moving the backs a little bit higher. So that's why uh, there's two different clips 
on your belt where you can move it uh, and push it down so basically some some of some of them they have a sliders I have a stationary uh, D-rings which I will unclip from one end and put it towards uh, towards to the front this way nothing is gonna float uh, on the back end like today I'm using only pretty much uh, three quarter of my air uh, they're not fully filled as I did a dive it in white man's pond a couple weeks ago and I figured there's still so much air that I can do another maybe 35 40 minute dive in here now I will take a video uh, underwater as well so you guys can see what's inside this pond uh, like I said there's nothing spectacular there's no no rocks no nothing there's few branches but the water is pr pr pretty uh, crystal clear I will show you also later what kind of gear I'm using for the cold water diving as the water here in Alberta for most of the year gets pretty cold uh, we're looking probably between uh, 1 and uh, 8 degrees in the summer at its best all right so there's a couple other things that I would like to add uh, to side mount uh, so the best regulators uh, for side mount uh, would be your DIN regulators not the yoke as uh, th I think that they're the safest ones uh, there's less chance for you for leaks uh, and uh, they're designed uh, for most uh, side mount diving so regulator is a big thing uh, the only thing when you're diving south sometimes uh, you might have to use your adapters which makes it sort of messy I'm not fan of it but uh, if you have to do it you have to do it nothing you can do about it now let's talk about uh, the cold water uh, scuba gear that I'm using uh, what I chose to use and uh, what works for me for quite a few years already so we'll start with the basics uh, what am I wearing when I'm going um, cold water diving so uh, the first layer that we're putting on is the base layer and it's a pretty thin good quality insulating layer the same thing what you would be wearing pretty much uh, going for hiking or um, or skiing uh, in the winter so the first layer consists your main shirt and then of course you have your long jones after that um, um, I'm wearing depends how cold it is in the summer months I will use only one socks in uh, winter I will be using uh, two sets of socks and second layer that I'm putting in the thermal this is a Santi BZ400. Uh, I can dive with that uh, to a temperature of 2 degrees and it keeps me warm for about 45 minutes. Um, this is probably one of the best on the market uh, that you can find. I had a different base layers, they didn't work as well. So Santi BZ400, there's also a heated mod uh, model that uh, you can uh, have a battery and uh, heat. Um, it's slightly more expensive of course. but but I have some friends that are using those and uh, it works flawless and after we have dry suit so dry suits again there's huge selection of dry suits on the market <clears throat> I had a um, different dry suit before which was White's Catalyst 360 and uh, last couple years I bought Santi as well that stuff is made in Poland and uh, it's probably one of the best dry suits and uh, with the dry suit you don't get wet so you're, you have your wrist seals and uh, your, your rubber gloves some people are using different type of gloves there's again a couple different kinds and uh, I have uh, liners that I use when it's really cold and also the rubber glove itself it has an insulation inside uh, the mask that I'm using it's a uh, atomic aquatic and that's a venom mask uh, it's a great mask uh, I had a couple different masks uh, over the years and that one works also excellent uh, another one I was using before I think it was uh, Genesis I think or something like that and then for fins um, of course for side mount you don't want to wear those long fins, uh, what everybody loves uh, wearing when diving south. I use the Scuba Pro Jet Fins. Uh, they are the best uh, fins as they are not really flexible, but they have a lot of proportion. You don't have to kick really hard. They are on a heavier side and uh, you, you don't have to kick hard wearing those. Uh, they are good for frog kick. Of course, you got to cover your head and for head, I'm wearing a Santi 9mm hood 
uh, that keeps your noggin slightly warmer than uh, than going without it i can see that uh, even possible uh, as your face gets really cold that's the only thing that is exposed uh, when you're doing a cold water diving so thank you for watching uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, you can always comment down below and you can check out uh, my other videos uh, that I have on my channel from uh, different sites uh, here in uh, Alberta, Canada. Also, I have some dives in uh, uh, Manitoba and uh, a lot of dives in Mexico and uh, Dominican Republic. So once you have your harness on, this is how it looks. and then the two bottom bungee cords and that's all there is to XD harness like I say it's very streamlined and way less stuff uh, than wearing a traditional uh, buoyancy compensator the new inflator hose attaches on the chest and your, and your tanks attach on the bungee cord cords and the clips in here two dive computers and sometimes when I'm going for a longer dive I will wear my dive slate with the information on my right hand side left hand side is for my dive computers so there we are this is the forget-me-not pond it's a beautiful area surrounded by mountains and like I said it's pretty shallow it's about 14 to 17 feet but uh, the, the water is crystal clear and it will be a fun dive <laughs> 